I'm in the CH offices right now, and as you can see, they're totally abandoned. This is a possible future that could come to pass if you don't sign up and subscribe for Dimension 20 Show on YouTube and hit that bell to get notifications for all the exclusive new D20 content we're gonna put only on that channel. They're coming. Avoid this future. Sign up for Dimension 20 Show right now and hit that bell. <laughs> I'm gonna sh myself. <laughs> we descend into Times Square with this strange icy fortress. Can I just heave that off me? Boom. You fling the entire chrysalis off <laughs> into what? sky. No. Santa, I'm coming to get you. You leap up and fully decapitate the entire oh, thing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what the f happened to <laughs> you? Sleigh, where's my sleigh? Still in the park. You guys arrive in Central Park. A full centaur walks up. Any uh, idea what happened here? I saw some pixie stuff around here. Maybe it was somebody trying to cover up and make it look like it was pixies. Because underneath it was infernal. It's gone. What's like? gone, Santa? My list. How powerful is this list? It's extremely important that we find this list and get it back. I will say that there has been this dark force uh, inviting me. That sounds like something you all should check out. Welcome back, one and all, to the unsleeping city. My name is Brandley Mulligan. These are our intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, intrepid heroes. And last we left them off, they were near the promenade in Central Park in a version of New York with magic around every corner. Indeed, but we have gotten our first taste of the unsleeping city. Santa Claus's sleigh has just been flown away by jolly old Saint Nick himself and his eight tiny reindeer. Bye Santa, we love you. And the cops who perceived it as a Toyota camera being towed away due to the strange umbral arcana that prevents New Yorkers from noticing pretty much anything weird happening, had now begun to disband. You guys see Officer Epona Cirillo, a centaur cop, uh, has uh, entered now this piece of Santa's dashboard with this strange fey room with some infernal underneath it. Uh, she's taking that to go enter it into evidence. The wind kicks up, a little bit of snow flies around. Uh, you six companions, bedraggled by some combat, but all standing at this point, now stand here in snowy Central Park as the crowd kind of chatters and talks to each other about this crazy car crash. Can you believe that? Some fucking drunk driver must have taken a car right into the tree, man, I tell you. You are left with each other. Snow whipping around you on a cold, brisk New York day, late in the afternoon. Pete, you feel that sweet peppermint tooth still in your head. Look around, Sophia, you now see this centaur walking away that a mere three days ago would have just looked like a horse cop to you. And the rest of these denizens of the unsleeping city, you guys all know that something very strange indeed has happened. What do you guys want to do? Uh, uh, hey, Pete, let me see your old uh, tooth there. Uh... Like my yeah, what your uh, should your, I just rip it out? I don't want this in my mouth. No, no, no. It's gonna rot yeah, my I teeth. Like you can rip it out. Be ripping teeth Let's out. Let's have a vote. Right? I say, I, I say, say ripped it out. I, I agree with Cog. As, okay, <laughs> I don't like <laughs> any of this. As the trained medical professional here, nobody's ripping teeth out of nobody's mouth. Truthfully, I just said it because it sounded fun. You know what? Ultimately, Pete, it's up to you. Do I don't. I can't be missing a tooth and selling drugs. You know, that's too, that's, that's true. too dangerous. People, shouldn't be doing these either, days, yeah. people hold drugs yeah, to so I'm gonna, very high I'm going to leave the tooth in and keep selling. Can I look at it very closely? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I pry open his mouth and look in. The dirtiest rat <laughs> fingers of all time. <laughs> I mean, cut rats, you're supposed to wear gloves or something, It's fine, man. it's fine. You know, you, you go camping, you're Ooh. touching the dirt, and you're sleeping, you do whatever, Where who cares? Are you, you touch the dirt? I camp every night. I live in the subway station. Ooh. Whoa. Don't worry, I've eaten so many sandwiches from his dirty hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congrats, uh, what are you rolling right now? Uh, like a medicine check, maybe? Yeah, go for it. Cool. Ooh, 23. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, you take a look. Uh, the peppermint tooth, it seems that Kingston's vaccine that he put in there earlier has fully stopped this transformation. But it looks, this shouldn't be here. Uh, Kingston's medicine should have reverted this tooth back to regular bone. Something about the intrinsic nature of Pete's DNA, mm. or maybe even something more profound and spiritual than that, is keeping this peppermint tooth here. And though it tastes sweet, you don't see it corroding, you don't see the saliva eating away at it at all. It looks, if you had to guess, and you had a very good roll, if you had to guess, the tooth is there because it wants to be, and something about Pete means it's more fun if it's there than if it's not. Hmm. I, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Just good. a peppermint right, tooth. It's fine. I don't know, you got a peppermint tooth. Here's some uh, multivitamins. Um, <laughs> if you want to just take one oh, if yeah. you're worried I about some drugs. You know those are in like four shit, hours. Right? Oh, oh, <laughs> those really those are really good for me. They're Should we go uh, vitamin C, truly. B12. Should we talk to the wizards who, uh, you know. Well, we'll see if, oh, I think they have a place near here, right? Well, uh, real quick, because um, I'm kind of new to this. Magic is just real. Yeah, I actually yeah. want to oh, check in much. with you two. Are you yeah. guys doing I was okay? See, you guys just, like, woke up this to morning you and privately. you want to talk to me? I would love to just run and get dumplings with <laughs> yeah. Kingston hey, if we well, have you time. You want to go grab some coffee real quick? Yeah. Look, hey, we're going to go grab some coffee for everyone. Do okay. we want to meet? Or do we want to head somewhere? Do we want to go talk to Alejandro at the uh, at the Gramercy Occult Society? Maybe get let him know what's going on with all the information we just got? Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, you guys can walk ahead. Yeah, we'll yeah, walk ahead. We'll well, <laughs> maybe someone could just refresh me on what you guys talk about. Just, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to do it this publicly, but you know what? It happened. So I kind of, I don't really know if I drive <laughs> with any of you, but Kingston, I feel like I trust you. Darling. I got some questions. Here's the deal. Magic is real and you get to see it. Isn't that great? Let's, let's go get some coffee. It's so fun! <laughs> uh, Will you talk to her? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her. Yeah. As you guys head off, you see that the actual natural movements of the crowd as you get towards Columbus Circle and start walking. It's not too far of a walk from here to the you know, Bryant Park and the, and the public library there. Uh, so you guys head off. The crowd naturally moves around Kingston and creates a little pocket of privacy. You guys stop. You have never in your life seen a dumpling cart in New York. <laughs> but you go up and you see that there's a guy standing there who looks around for a second and goes, Hey, Kingston Brown! Hey, Ricky, good to see you, man. How are you? How's it going? I appreciate it. Good to see you, man. You're looking fit. You're looking good. Hey, I like the mustache. Is that new? That is very new. My girlfriend, she liked the, the wax on the oh, mustache. So okay, I see that. She said she wants to. The Pringles guy, so <laughs> what hey, you can do, huh? Hey, that's her business, right? Hey, it's my business now, too, oh, you know? Okay. It does. Hey, my friend's trying to get a couple of dumplings. Can yeah, you look it up? can I get some, like, hot and sour pork dumplings? Oh, for sure he wants some hot and sour pork. Uh, he reaches in, uh, throws some dumplings. You get these, like, little plastic containers. It smells so good. Uh, it gives these huge heaping containers. You get these little spoons that go in them. Um, I'm rolling a blunt. <laughs> I'm not about to eat this sober. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, My name's Ricky, too. <laughs> My name's Ricky, too. Oh, Ricky! You name Ricky as well? Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Here, and you see, he says, hold out your hand. Hot, wet dumpling right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, you see, he puts these in there. Um, uh, you immediately... Uh, eat this dumpling, you regain, um, uh, it's been a sh about a short rest amount of time, but you do regain five hit points from eating this. Uh, Kingston, I'm not sure if you're full or not, but you regain uh, five hit points as Great. well. Um, uh, you guys walk away from the dumpling cart, chowing down on these bad boys. Uh, they are so tasty and delicious. Um, uh, I'm smoking and eating, so I'm kind of just like, like, almost like drinking the dumpling. So you're full, like, you'd have to hork down an unshared <laughs> dumpling and smoke this spliff in the middle. Oh, it's blueberry. <laughs> I should have just picked a natural roll. Um, yeah, so you guys have a weird little amount of privacy. And the, the noise of the snow, there's this beautiful thing. New York is a very noisy city. But with the thick snow around you right now, it's actually kind of muffled. And you realize that you're having a hard time hearing the people around you. And you have a feeling that anything you were to say right now would not be heard. Something about the confidence you're keeping with Kingston means that what you're saying wouldn't be heard outside of your conversation right now. Cool. Hey, so what is going on? It, is this... 
is going on. Oh, you mean with the, all the magic and the Santa Claus and yeah, all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, welcome to the unsleeping city. New York exists in a plane of existence where just below it is the unsleeping city and just above it is Nod or the sixth borough. And so New York is this magical place where the unsleeping city, which has all these like fantastical magical elements that you keep seeing, it, bleeds into New York. And so I don't know what has happened to you, but you, unlike most people in this city, are now able to see all this bull trolls, that big centaur person, you know, all of that. I just thought I was always up. I've um, been taking so many drugs for so long. I've seen all this stuff for a while. Yeah. But I just thought, like, oh, yeah, I was tripping. Yeah, well, for a while you were, but now something has clearly happened to you with, like, that weird that happened back in my nurse's office. Uh, I mean, there's clearly some magic has been imbued in you. Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't fret. It's <laughs> gonna be all right, okay? You are in good company. Me and Miss D have been doing this for a long time. We're gonna talk to Alejandro. Is this, like, a full-time job, or do I still have my life? I mean, you could still have a life, but I'll tell you, it's gonna be a wild one. <laughs> hey, y'all, uh, sorry, I just seen so much information, but I also really need to know. Kaveh is using, his little, is using his little rat ears and just like translating for you, but in like the <laughs> Kogrash way. Uh, so there's like a real New York and then there's a <laughs> fake one. You're in the real one now, so there's like <laughs> magic everywhere. So yeah, we're gonna like save the world. Like how we saved Santa, like that, but like all the time about like. A Hey, uh, you know, it's gonna be a wild one. <laughs> a wild job. Yeah. I mean. uh, as you guys walk along, the, the exact opposite of what's happening to Kingston and Pete is happening to you guys because you can't go five feet in the city without people being like, Misty! Oh, darling, darling. I, God, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm here with my kids, Keebly. We're doing a trip for the holidays. <laughs> I love that. I love it. New York, it's the greatest city in the world. Oh, you're telling me. I always dreamed of coming here. I couldn't believe it. was this or Paris, and we just couldn't oh, with my mom. Oh, me too. Mom. I love Paris. But you know, it's New York. It's New York. Oh, my God. We see the Broadway shows and everything. And the Statue of Liberty's from France, so it's almost like an extra free trip. Exactly, exactly. There's so many beautiful French monuments right here in New York City. And you're just talking to me like a regular person. I can't even believe it. Oh, stop. Everybody's a regular person. You see that as you continue talking to this family from the Midwest, their just smiles light up, and again, their adoration wisps off of them in streams of gold and silver and purple and pink, and you see it says, well, thank you so much for taking the time, Miss Moore. You didn't have to, and it really means a lot. Please, I love my fans. It's not even my fans. You like my family. Oh, my God, can you believe someone would say something so nice? Uh, you see that they all chatter excitedly. The dad, who's up to this point, said, uh, n absolutely nothing, just like let his wife and his two daughters talk to you, leans in and says, I thought your performance in that revamp of Assassins was remarkable. <laughs> or I thought it was really remarkable. Stephen Sondheim, my <laughs> dear Stephen, is, is, is such a, an astonishing talent. And, and to be alive when he is alive, we're all just so lucky, you know? I mean, you're a vision, and I'm sorry, I gotta go. And you see that he <laughs> <laughs> turns and walks away. Um, yeah, you guys continue walking down the street. You eventually arrive at the public library again, uh, where you see the two giant stone lions turn to look at you guys. Well, 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 it seems our friends have returned, and how fared the battle in Times Square? Oh, honestly, We're alive. pretty, we Santa's alive. pretty good. Santa's alive, <laughs> killed a bunch of mutants. I personally uh, had a great time. If I had to be honest, I think that we saved Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is saved. Splendid, splendid. Someone needs to save it every year. For that thing to go off, it's a tremendous amount of effort, certainly. Well, as we have said before, we are Orlando and Ruby as the guardians of the Gramercy Occult Society. My brother always lies. I always tell the truth. Which of us, um, wait, hold on. <laughs> I start to walk in. <laughs> <laughs> the stairs, uh, we're gonna get this right one time! Uh, uh, you guys descend uh, through the staircase, uh, walking down crazy MC Escher steps against golden, warm brown light, the clicking of that tile. There's so much echoey goodness in this place when you're in that giant stone kind of civic building. Of your shoes on the stone. 
open a pair of doors. Uh, you see uh, Esther is here, as is Alejandro. Alejandro has his little flat cap off. You can see his sort of bald head with like a little wraparound of white hair. Uh, he looks down, you see that Anna and Amelia, who both look to be like in their maybe like late teens, early 20s, a sort of college age, uh, you see that they are laid back in chairs uh, and that they have some injuries on them and they smell strongly of mint. Mm. A strong mint smell. Um, well, uh, I mean, now that I'm magic, I might have some healing. So I go over to them and I lay my hands on them. You see that uh, they look up, one looks up and says, who the f are you? Who the f are you? Hi, uh, <laughs> Sophia Bicicletta, newly magic. Uh, <laughs> experimenting with my limitations. You see Alejandro looks over you and says, she can't heal people or is this? No, no, no she can heal. heal. So we're trying to, we're trying to roll she's her trying, soft. She's doing a really good job though. I, I could <laughs> lay on hands yeah. someone. Can I come and just like real. put her arm around her and be like, hey, you do, remember when you did a full flip around the Santa Claus rib? That's your, <laughs> right? This is, this is not, okay. this is not your, this okay. is not your magic. I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> you take the hands off of them. Uh, you see, yeah, Kingston, uh, okay. You go to work on you these two. You other cool. I promise. Okay. I promise. Okay, I'm not a healer. I have just <laughs> Thank you. Um, you see that uh, Anna looks over at you, um, uh, who's the, one of the twins who's on the left, and goes, um, so basically a bunch of these f***ed up Santa Clauses came out. Mm -hmm. We were on 34th Street. You see Amelia goes, we were not on 34th Street. We were on uh, Fifth Avenue. But they came out. Okay, but no, we were, we were rounding the corner on to 34th Street. Ladies, all we need to know is what happened. <sighs> Sorry, it's just my sister is like... <laughs> no, I understand, but what happened? <laughs> well, basically, we were going on patrol because we knew that the clones were going to be out because SantaCon was happening, and a bunch of these mutants came out that were, like, not bumbling around. They, like, charged straight for us and bit us, and now we can feel... It feels like my bones are turning to peppermint or something. Mm, uh, can I do whatever... Do I have what I need, or do I need to go back to... Like to do what uh, I did for Pete. Give me a medicine check. I'll see what you, if you can have I, the ability to do can it. Can I now. do a check and see if I recognize any of them? Uh, mm -hmm. Nine. Uh, nine? Yeah, you need to take them to the hospital. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, give me a uh, flat charisma check. <laughs> cool. 19. Um, you see that Amelia and Anna both turn up, look at you, and their eyes go wide. You have definitely sold weed to these two many, many times, you see they go, whoa, oh man, who are all these new people? Are they all new to the Unsleeping City? I've never seen either of these two people before. They are both brand new, both this person and especially this person, not yet. I, I think we've met uh, at yeah. a party, yeah. We what? met at like a party um, uh, raising money for a political candidate. You see that Alejandro looks over and says, I had no idea you two were getting involved in politics. That is so good to be civic-minded. That's incredible. Who was the candidate? Oh, it was uh, someone who didn't end up going forward, which is a bummer. <laughs> you know. uh, but yeah, we... I think politics is so important, and every year I do one of those videos where I tell people to vote with a bunch oh, of other theater people. People love people those. People love those videos. Uh, I lean into them and I'm like, but we are taking donations for someone really similar, uh, and oh. they're really good. What what we've heard recently, they're really good. So it's twenty five a pop, um, <laughs> and uh, oh, they'll sure. really appreciate your support. Oh, you're going to. Oh, I was talking to Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Alejandro. He says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I would be happy to donate. Um, let me see here. Uh, do you take PayPal, Venmo, or anything like that? Yeah, I definitely take Venmo. Um, <laughs> I hand you $100. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's a lot for me. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you see Anna and Amelia look at you, and they say, um, could me and my sister split a donation? You could, yeah, absolutely. Cool. It's definitely splittable. It's enough to. It's enough. I actually donated earlier this morning and then had some dumplings, and it was <laughs> a great choice. Uh, they both nod. I uh, thought you smoked weed before you had the dumplings. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> um, you see that Esther crosses her arms and says, uh, This is the most poorly veiled innuendo I've ever <laughs> heard in my life. Uh, Alejandro, this young man is a drug dealer. Uh, you see that Alejandro says, 
How could you tell? It seemed like he was so civic minded. Uh, and you see, he says, he's talking about selling weed to your granddaughters. And you see, he looks and says, well, well they're adults, it's their business, no problem of mine. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Esther, uh, Esther, what are you, are you a politically minded person? Because I'm trying to get more involved. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm politically That's minded. Awesome. I, mostly I, I do a lot of canvassing for uh, causes over candidates generally. Um, oh. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, rent justice and trying to fight for, you know, neighborhoods to be preserved, things like that. Oh, for sure. Gentrification is ruining everything. Hey, real talk. Where do you live? Hmm? Where do you live? Brooklyn. Nice. But I live in Polish Brooklyn, okay? It's different. Hey, real quick, can I go? I'm going to go get medicine for these ladies' peppermint bones. Uh, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be back in 25, 30 minutes. I'll go can with you. I, yeah, I'll also go Everyone. with you. Can I casually put my hand on the other twin that I didn't touch and just try to heal real quick again? <laughs> Give me a medicine check real quick. <laughs> I got a 16. A 16. Uh, you see that she goes, that's not helping, but it does feel good. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Magic of love. There's something to it. Can I, can I try and lay on hands them? Yeah, for go five for five points, it says I can cure yeah, disease. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll just um, do it. Uh, Ricky, you lay hands on one of them, um, and you see that this light goes through them, uh, and you can feel the disease, the virus, being arrested mm -hmm. in her body. Uh, it's still present there, but it looks like it's not going to spread any farther while they get to the hospital. Cool. Um, uh, cool. See, Alejandra says, uh, all right, let's get these girls to the hospital. Um, uh, perhaps I can come along with you and we can discuss hey, everything hey, that is happening. We can all talk on the bus. Uh, you guys leave the public library with Alejandro. Uh, you see Esther looks at uh, Alejandro and says, uh, Ali, you want me to stay here? And he says, if you could keep an eye on the society, that would be for the best. Uh, she looks over, uh, looks at you and says, because uh, you're still a little injured, right? Or no? Uh, yes, I guess I am. You see, she says, you all right, Ricky? You look pretty beat up. Oh, you know, it's just part of the, the whole thing, right? <laughs> I'm a little hurt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she nods and says, well, hopefully get Kingston to take care of that. I also heard that you decapitated the big guy, right? Yeah, I, uh, I got kind of caught up in the situation and I killed the mutant Santa that was the biggest one, so I don't know. <laughs> It was just such a threat, so I just had to. I'm step watching up, him so. because I'm just fascinated by this level of macho, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, goddamn. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for hitting the talking points with, with me, Ricky. I appreciate two it. Two hands on it, mm -hmm. and I jump through the air, clean off. You know, <laughs> so. great. I'm gonna look after some of the uh, goings on here. We've got to take care of the engine. So, best of luck. Uh, you guys head off, catch the bus as it heads uptown. Uh, as you're sitting on the bus, uh, headed back towards St. Owens, uh, Alejandro looks over at you and says, Peter, Peter, you said very... I take out my headphones because I was wearing them like a teen on a road trip. <laughs> so he says, so I took a quick arcane scan of your body and spirit before you left to deal with the menace in Times Square. This is a very special moment in the history of the unsleeping city. Peter, you are what is known in arcane circles as a Vox Phantasmus. Do you know what this means? No. Vox? Vox, which is a Latin for voice. And then Phantasmus, to mean an apparition, or in this case, a dream. I'm a voice for the dreams? That is correct. I'm a dream voice. A dream voice is true. There are certain people within um, the unsleeping city who occupy positions of important weight and gravity. Um, not myself, as a wizard, I have had to, como se dice, boss my my whole life, work very hard to study magic to get to this point, but I'm not complaining. There are certain people who are instead innately magical because of how they are born or because forces and entities speak through them. Kingston is one such person. You are another. There has not been a Vox Phantasmus in this city 
since I believe the mid-1920s. In the history of New York, there has never been a Vox Phantasmus and a Vox Populi at the same time. And a what? I'm the Vox Populi. What's that? Uh, well, as it was explained to me long ago, I am the spirit of the, the spirits of New York City saw fit to give me the strength and powers and blessings of New York itself. Uh, I guess because I was doing my part, uh, New York uh, invested its energy in me, and thus I was about 30 years ago, uh, I don't know, able to do magic. Uh, similar, I'm assuming, uh, I guess, I guess similar to what you're going through right now, it was, I woke up one day and, uh, yeah, I could l touch people and make them feel better. Uh, I didn't need any of the medicine or, or tools that I had spent years learning how to do the exact same thing. Um, you see that, uh, Alejandro nods and says, New York is a place of incredible power for a number of reasons. Much of the magic of the unsleeping city comes from the interplay between the waking world and the dreaming, what we call Nod, the sixth borough. The unsleeping city is the place where those two planes touch, and we find that beings from one place can enter into another. I will say as well here that there are opposing forces in certain cases. The magic of the Vox Populi comes from the power of the waking world, the places and people of New York itself. Your power does not come from that. It comes from the New York on the other side. Tell me, Peter, have you had any interactions with uh, beings, entities, or locales that would perhaps deviate from the norm? No. No? Mm. That is highly unlikely. Mm. <laughs> I make a look at <laughs> Kingston that's like, I'm not answering any more questions from <gasps> this guy. <laughs> you are dodging <laughs> Young man, I, I think you'll, you'll find it easier around here if you just start to tell the truth. Tell them, Misty. Because whatever you think that you've seen, we've seen worse and more. I just... And let me tell All right, you... if you guys are cops, you have to tell me. <laughs> Did you know that's the law? Hey, if I'm a cops. rat, right? That uh, means a rat right. on a magical bus. You... I'm definitely not a cop. This just feels family. like the most elaborate sting operation. Now you're asking if and I've ever seen anyone you, the... nefarious. <laughs> The voice of dreams back in the 1920s was a goddamn delight. It was so much fun. It was the 1920s. Everything was wrong. What was everything that person was like? Oh, my God. So fun. Through the most amazing parties. She was fabulous. Huh. She was really something else. Mm -hmm. Josephina Gatsby. Oh, I loved her. She was great. Uh, you see that... Uh, Alejandro looks at you and says, I will tell you two things now. Number one, I promise you on my word, as a wizard and as someone who wants only the best for his city, I am not a cop. Secondly, I watched you actively try to sell drugs to my two granddaughters <laughs> not more than 10 minutes ago. So if this was a sting, probably I would have leaned into the microphone and say so by now. Yeah, okay. Something to consider. Also, mm. cops don't have to tell you they're cops. Oh, that's you extremely know important. That. Really? Yeah. They really don't have to tell you. They yeah. don't. Uh, it would. That's stupid. It's a very stupid <laughs> thing to believe. <laughs> but then in court, it could get thrown out if they lied. No. They no. just tell them the stuff. All right, God fucking fine. I take a microdose of acid pill <laughs> out of my pocket and swallow it. Ah, oh, great. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, yeah. Okay, so I saw. Someone killed my dad, but not in like a, it's a sad way, like in a good way. Um, what? And um, then there was a big happy face button and someone asked me to push it and I did. And he said, um, spread the word, I'm free. Uh, and I think his name was, um, uh, yeah. 
Lazarus. He said, spread the news, I'm leaving today. So whoever Lazarus is, I guess I let out by pushing a button. Um, Your dad's dead? Yeah, That. what was that part? He's a piece of shit, man. I mean. <laughs> okay. He sucked. And uh, and I guess I do kind of like feel in contact with this voice still. So there is a voice in dreams that you spoke to and released from some kind of bondage. That's, that's kind of what it felt like, yeah. Okay, that has the potential to be very bad. Mm -hmm. That has the potential to be very bad. Mm -hmm. That has the potential to be extremely bad. So, what I will say to you now is this. It is important that you learn to govern these abilities. You are gifted with an extreme amount of power. That power, if wielded recklessly, could tear this city apart. So, I know it is not fair to you but you have become someone of great significance, and your decisions, should they be reckless, selfish, and dangerous, will carry an impact far greater than they would have even a week before now. Are you about to microdose again? Does that feel responsible? Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, the point is it's so like, little. It's so little. I, I, I gotta dose. say, I think that what Pete is doing, I think that there, you know, there there could be some value for that. There hasn't been enough there's research. There is research what. out there. There's research out there. It's, there. Not, there's it's not microdosing for... if you keep taking it, right? It was it's too just... small microdoses. Pete, I got. I can get you a guest pass to my gym. And we can go. <laughs> we can do some sets together. We can just hit, you know, shoulders. Uh, you see. I mean, I'll think about it, man. That's they got really a spectator nice. pass. Right. <laughs> you guys you pull up to the hospital. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you just pull up to the hospital. You get off. Uh, Anna and Amelia walk with you. Uh, go ahead and make us some medicine checks with advantage. Oh, great. Okay, great. That's uh, 18, uh, less than 18. Uh, and that's very high. That's uh, 26 and 25. So. Uh, 18 and... 26. Uh, 18, 26. Uh, the, you go ahead. The one, you perfectly cure uh, Anna, and then Amelia, who actually was the one that had the uh, virus stopped, you're able to take it the rest of the way over, and they are both healed. Um, nice. Uh, you see uh, Alejandro looks over and says, uh, I know we're in a hospital. Is it cool if I light up in here or no? Uh, in my office? Sure. Uh, everywhere else? I'd actually prefer you not. <laughs> he nods. You see, he takes this old, crazy wooden pipe and puts it back in his coat. I hand him a jewel. <laughs> what, is this? what is it? What am I looking at right it's now? It's an e-cigarette. You can plug it into your computer. That one is um, cucumber habanero flavored. It's just like a tobacco pipe, my brother. Peter, this is extremely rad. <laughs> can I buy this from you, or I can just get this anywhere? You can have it, man. If you need a re-up, though, then you gotta pay. Peter, you are a, an extremely cool dude, <laughs> and I very much appreciate that you have given me this gift. Thanks. Know this. You see that one of his <laughs> eyes turns into a golden point of light, and you see that in a mirror, his reflections begin to double up and extend infinitely away. He says, do not take it lightly that a wizard is in your debt. Call my name thrice, and I shall appear in a moment of need for you. Wait, I'm so sorry, but as a Lady Gaga fan, I might accidentally say Alejandro multiple times, and I'm not calling you. Okay, if you do it to the tune of the Lady Gaga song, uh -huh. I will know. Alejandro. Okay, great. Yes. All right, cool. All right, good, 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 good. I'm just double checking. No, you for know. sure. It's not like a, I'm bound by it. It's just that I have a thing in my office where if someone says my name, a little wisp of smoke goes into a glass bulb. Oh, cool. So it's really, it's not like, it would be cooler to say it's just magic where I just appear, but it's actually like I just see it and then I teleport there. And That's really generous, man. Thank you so this much. Is, this is, oh, Peter, come here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving my tricks away. This is not. I should not do this. This thing, <laughs> this is crazy. And it has a kick to it. The flavor is... Isn't it nice? The yeah. flavor is not a bad part of it. Do you have a phone? Put my number in it. You can hit me up anytime for anything. Alejandro. Hmm? Sorry, I'm sorry. What okay. are you doing, man? You're a grown...
Man, I don't talk to me about a grown man. You're a grown man. I am, man. I don't want them to be your no, father. I don't need you to tell my baby. You don't need to be good time with a young some, man. You don't need some kids number to my kids, man. <laughs> All right, look. Thank you very much for this jewel. I will treasure it forever. I am in your debt. Um, well, it says, now, there is something very sinister at work. The dream realm is an area which even for the wizards of the Gramercy Occult Society exists outside of their realm of knowledge. We know a fraction of what there is to know about the dream realm. We have hardly enough time as it is simply to map out the unsleeping city and those things which are able to issue forth from the dream realm into the waking world. The actual dream realm itself is far beyond our understanding. However, there are things there vaster and more potent than I can describe in words. And if you have already engaged in powerful magics there as the Vox Phantasmus, then it is hard to say what may have happened. Do you, how did you come to know this beam was released? I can see on your bracelet that that is a source of your power, so if you were to press that, that That's is- That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I saw a, a gold rectangle appear and then I was able to push this button to release. They asked me if I wanted to, and I did want to. Gold rectangle, and that is when the voice started to speak to you? Yeah. It was the same voice the whole time, or different voices? It felt like different voices, maybe. Okay. There was a gray baby. A gray baby? Mm -hmm. A gray baby. <laughs> a gray baby. <laughs> It's starting to lose all meaning. Those words are... Uh... Great, Interesting. Baby. Okay, hold great on. Baby, I'm baby. going to... This requires... I don't think the book is still at our main chapter. Maybe out at the Clinton Hill Chantry or somewhere else. I must go. Uh, you see, he says, Anna, Amelia, you guys need cab fare? And you see that they look and they say, Grandpa, we, it's Lyft now or Uber or we'll just take a subway. Okay, I can give you cash if you need it. I just care about your safety because today you almost died. Mwah, mwah, my granddaughter so me has. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> and a bunch of- he's going to hell? He's head out. head out. Oh. Oh, I heard hell cool. too. Uh, Anna and Amelia say, Kingston, thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate it. Um, well, listen, um, do you need anything from us before we head out? Or, because we can like redo some of the enchantments on your nurse's office, or if you need anything else? That would be lovely, but if you guys got places to go, I can happily handle it. Uh, you see that one of them's on their phone already clicking. You see the other one begins to uh, cast some enchantments that again, all have, you see the, these circular gyroscoping images of light that look like New York City manhole covers made out of like green and orange neon light begin to go into the walls all around your nurse's office. Um, she says, cool, that should do it. Thanks, Kingston, Thank bye. Thank you so much. Oh, before you guys leave, um, you two are just so cute if you ever want um, a haircut or anything. And I give them a Aww. business card. Uh, they look, go ahead and make a little persuasion roll for me. Well, it's on the house. Uh, uh, but that is a 12. A 12. Um, you see, they look and they say, oh, that'd be fun. On the house? Sure. Um, uh, your hair looks awesome. Uh, Thank you. Uh, where, where is your haircut place? It's on Staten Island. Okay, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a ferry ride Bye. away. They have beers Take on the ferry. Lovely to meet you. Okay. <laughs> you they head out. All right. Uh, <laughs> We're going to get a subway stop one of these days, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Uh, great, uh, and it's uh, just you guys left here, um, uh, that are left here in Kingston's office. Well, well, well. Just like old times. I'll yeah. tell you, Fox Phantasma. Yeah, sorry to be such a d about it. I just, I'm, there's like a lot of cops after me and uh, I move a lot of product through this city, so I, I, I didn't want to be taken down, you know? Mm. Mm. I, I mean, think you're cool. I think you don't really have to worry about, like, you have, like, magic now, so you're cool. You yeah, know? I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, I hand you, like, four Xanax. <laughs> okay, oh. stop giving people drugs. What are you, I, mm. I mean, I will take some Xanax. <laughs> there there you I, I wait, like, to, this will kill me. Yeah. This absolutely will kill me. Please take this back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I look I I'm yeah. a tiny rat. Do you have a place to stay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a house and everything. Okay. Um, Good. <laughs> um, 
I you... may have been kicked out of my house. Well, if anyone needs a place to stay, I'm but a ferry ride away. So where do you live? <laughs> um, I am in a studio apartment in, uh, in Brooklyn. Oh, sick. Um, I have another bedroom if you'd like to stay with me. That's cool, also yeah. an option. A lot of options. I you actually, guys, uh, I have a whole house. Oh. Whoa. On Staten Island. Oh, <laughs> so where do you live? <laughs> I live in the uh, subway tunnels. That's, I don't know if man. you want to curl up in a... I, I just it, get very quiet and, like, edge away from the conversation because <laughs> I definitely don't want to stay with me. It's, it's a guest bedroom with a California king. <laughs> That is all lovely. That's yeah. really nice. I guess I'm on fireman time is the other thing you should know. I'm waking <laughs> yeah, up King City, it would be really cool to crash with you maybe. We can work um, something out. Private oh. bathroom for the guest room. Oh, that's pretty cool. On Staten Island. Hey, Kingston, um, <laughs> when can I move in? <laughs> okay, moving in is a strong word. You can stay with me until we figure something out. All right, else why out. don't we all meet at Kingston's apartment tomorrow morning? Great. Okay. The new Everybody headquarters. Come over. Yeah, over. great. Uh, I'm right. on the top floor. You guys say hello to my mother on the way up, all right? All right. You okay. know, you have manners. All right. I love visiting Kingston because there's this little place that does cafe con leche for 75 cents. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The bodega yeah. on the corner. Oh. That's what living in New York's all about. It's, it's, all it's about crazy it. when you can get coffee for less than a dollar. Less I'll be than honest a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful condensed milk and espresso. Uh, mm. Wonderful. Will you guys take off from there going to your various places? Um, let's go around. Uh, so you've had this weird meeting of all these different various forces at work and have sort of come together and it seems like some momentous things are underway. Uh, we'll just go around the table. Uh, Ricky, what does Ricky do as he leaves from there? Where is he headed to? Um, Ricky's just going home. He's gotta get a good eight hours in. <laughs> uh, you know, like, this is pretty, <laughs> this hasn't registered to him that this is anything that crazy. Anything special. Made uh, some new friends today, cool. And then, Jogged home. <laughs> Hell yeah. You jog home. You have a whole, like, in your studio, you have, like, all your gym and workout equipment in there. Uh, do a couple quick reps. Um, uh, you get a little message, as you do every single night, from your mom and dad saying, sending our love. Hope you had another great day. Saw you on the news. Love our boy. <laughs> um, and Text them a picture of me working out. You know, no days off. Love you, mom and dad. <laughs> no days off. Love you. <laughs> Uh, you get a text back of your mom way in the foreground with her face kind of clipped off, going like, ah! And your dad completely in a newspaper, not looking. And she says, the text under it is, your dad says, wow, so strong. Hard eyes, hard eyes, hard eyes, hard eyes. <laughs> Sounds like dad. <laughs> uh, where does Sophia head off to? Okay, well, Sophia is heading back to Staten Island, but... <laughs> Uh, the the looming disappointment of her very empty, once marital, marital bed is uh, haunting her. And so she immediately turns back around and she goes, Cug, uh, do you want to grab a drink or something? Also, I've got an amazing detangler. Uh, let me let me at your fur. It's all matted and destroyed. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it like this, you sure? If you want to... Yeah, I think so. And then I think I just want to work on <laughs> Kogrash's fur and <laughs> give him, like, a little styling. <laughs> like, straighten Kogrash's like... fur? So yeah. you guys are at a speakeasy around the corner, <laughs> and you're chemically detangling. <laughs> Do I just look like a little ugly but dude <laughs> to non-magic people? Um, I'm gonna actually ask you to roll a so charisma I might just look check. Like a rat. Roll a charisma check. <laughs> I'm gonna try to not look like a rat. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm so bad, crazy. Um, I rolled a 13, but I have negative two. I got an 11. 11. Okay, so uh, you're there detangling this rat's fur. But also giving it some volume. <laughs> Tease it a little bit. It feels, yeah. Congrats, it you feels look, good. You look in the mirror, you're starting to look like a full chinchilla. You're just oh. like, like <laughs> so poofy. Um, you see that uh, a maitre d' sort of walks over. It's like a restaurant and bar. Walks mm. over and says, hi, ma'am. Um, <laughs> I've never had to do this before. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not interested. I know what you're going after. And <laughs> I, I'm not married, but I was recently, so I still kind of consider myself married. <sighs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. In no world could that have been what I was going for. <laughs> and 
I try to start dancing. Uh, <laughs> what? Like as a rat, like I'm a trick rat. <laughs> you see that you you don't know what you look like right at this moment, and you see that the person looks down at you and says, "Ma'am, you have to understand how far it has gotten for me to say this." Do I you see him dancing? You see him dancing as Cogrash, but you see that the guy looks at you and says, <laughs> "You have." Your baby is so hairy that it is oh my God. upsetting other customers, and I'm going wow. to have to ask you to take your child out of the bar. Oh my God. Seriously? You're going to be against children? God, you know, new mothers just can't go anywhere. Your baby's covered in hair, and everyone's upset. I need you to... <laughs> We're gonna comp your drink, so your drink is on us, but you need to take your baby. Well, free drinks, get one more. Yeah. Get one more for me. Um, for one more drink, I'll leave. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you get a little, like, to-go coffee cup wow. of the alcoholic drink. Oh, right. good, this is a good scam. I know. You go in there, you got a hairy baby. People don't want to ask you to leave. You get him. <laughs> I think we got to run this scam on a couple more bars. Um, you guys, you end up running that scam. Uh, make an insight check, Kagresh. Okay. 23. Uh, two. Um, 22. You can tell after the third bar you guys run hairy baby on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the best night. <laughs> you can tell that Sophia's trying to not go home. Oh. Okay, where to next? Uh, you know what? Let's go to Staten Island, huh? You got, like, a basement I can, uh, curl up in, like, a dirty no, rag or something? you know what? You can sleep in my bed and I'll sleep in the guest room. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, yeah. Uh, you guys toddle off. You're blasted, Sophia. You're water. Um, <laughs> you guys wander through the park. <laughs> what was the dance you were doing, Mer? Uh Go ahead and make me a uh, constitution saving throw real quick. Okay. <clears throat> me too, or just her? Oh, she's uh, drunk. Yeah. That's going to be... 17. Hey, you're feeling great. You're all right. You're just a little tipsy. Um, you guys are wandering through Central Park at night, uh, snow kind of kicking around again. Um, you get to a certain point, and are you still wearing your plastic bag shoes, or do you... <laughs> <laughs> um, Have I seen any shoes on the street? Um, uh, go ahead and make a make yeah, a I'll look around for shoes. Too. Make an investigate okay. check. I'll call on some dumpsters. Um, I got a nineteen. I got twelve. You got a nineteen. Cog knows where to look for him. So on your way through the park, you look around and you find. Uh, the, the boathouse has some lockers in it where people keep shoes sometimes, and the lockers are very, very old. So on the way through the park, you bust into one of the lockers, and there's a little pair of, like, uh, just some comfy loafers. Um, I, I think no. I'll just stick yeah, with rich the plastic people. They're bag. loafers. I know, but they're not very... I, I go for a little more flair in the way I decorate <laughs> myself. Thank you, though. I really appreciate right. it. Yeah. Uh, you guys wander away from the boathouse, and you guys actually end up crossing through um, uh, Bethesda Fountain, um, which, if you guys know, Bethesda Fountain is the giant fountain in Central Park right next to the lake with this giant statue of an angel. It's a like beautiful angel um, in Central Park. Um, you're walking through. Um, each of you guys make a, a wisdom check. A wisdom check. Fourteen. Six. Uh, the tipsiness kind of hits you a little bit more, Sophia. You look up and um, are like entranced by this angel. She's just so beautiful to you. God, that's a nice figure. <laughs> the head of the angel turns to look at you and says, you're not so bad yourself. Oh my God, being magic is awesome. Hi, I'm Sophia Bicicleta. <laughs> Hold out my hand to it. Uh, the snow swirls around in the moonlight and the angel soars down on wings and as she lands, boom, you see she's made of metal. <laughs> um, uh, see, she says, Charms, uh, I'm the angel of the waters. You can call me M. Oh, hi, M. Nice to meet you. So what, bags are in now? <gasps> well, it was this or loafers. <laughs> oh, God, loafers in the I middle know. of winter? Who I know. 
What is this? What are we in the Hamptons or something? Give me a break. I know. I don't need yacht slippers. Yeah, no yacht fashion. Thank you. No, thank you. You see, she looks at it and says, uh, Congress. I don't know if we formally met, but you do really good work around here. Oh, in the thanks. Park. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's good seeing you. Uh, did you happen to see anything uh, weird going on in the park tonight? You know, what with the uh, Santa being kidnapped and all. Um, you see, uh, she says, oh, God, I heard about that yesterday. Yeah, that's awful. Uh, well, you know, I'm pretty stationary as far as things go. I have to guard these waters or, uh, you know, all hell breaks loose. But uh, I did hear, it's interesting about the Pixies. I heard a rumor going around that it was them or something like that. Um, but I will say that that seems a little odd because Don Confetti's daughter is getting married. Oh. So, it seems so like he, why would they be dabbling in some sort of... Seems like a, it's being stretched pretty thin. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a perfect time for him to get up to some trouble or something. Have Who's she getting heard? married to? Uh, some pigeon. A pigeon. Oh. These pictures are getting fancy. <laughs> a real rat bird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, have you ever heard of like uh, pixies getting involved with the Infernal? The Infernal? Yeah. Oh, these pixies? No, Don Confetti's an idiot. I don't think he has the smarts to tangle with any kind of real envoy of hell or anything like that. Mm. Hey, if it was going to happen anywhere, it would happen here, right? Mm, yeah, I guess that's true. Do you, uh, are people, is this an actual pigeon that she's marrying? Yeah, or? Ronald Pigeon. Ronald <laughs> Pigeon. I, good, uh, Maybe he's trying to ruin Do I know if Ronald's a or if Ronald's a good uh, make a nature check for me? Okay. <laughs> when is their marriage? Uh, 13. 13. Uh, most pigeons are exactly the same level of stupid. Okay. And uh, Ronald Pigeon just comes from a good pigeon family. Okay. So is this he an does alliance? a good stuff. <laughs> is this an alliance between, is this like a political marriage? Are the pixies trying to make an alliance with the pigeons? Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, the pigeons don't really have, I mean. So you think it's true love? They just really love each other and outside of, they're just marrying outside of the family? I think they're just marrying outside of the family. Yeah. It's also his youngest daughter. So I think that oh, she okay, has a little not more. not as much pressure. Sure. Not as much pressure as her mm. older sisters, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, well, listen, um, it was lovely seeing you here. Yeah. Um, she says, it's nice to meet you. Nice. So, you know, my friends call me Sophia Bikes, so if you want to say that, you can. Sophia Bikes? Well, you can call me M, as I've said. It's nice okay. to meet you, Sophie Bikes. Yeah. You want some water on your way home? Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, you see that she holds a hand up to the fountain, which has been shut off for the winter, and some of the water comes out into her hand, and she holds it out, and it holds its shape as though there is a cup or bowl there, uh, and pours it into your hand, and it holds the same shape as though held there by some invisible force. I marvel at it, and then I throw it back like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I take a quick bath in this? <laughs> Oh, she says, oh, um... I just did your hair. Uh, <laughs> never mind, I'll just have a little drink. Yeah. Uh, she says, you drink as well. Um, you guys are healed all the rest of any hit point damage oh, nice. you had left over. Um, and the water also, uh, you see that actually, even just drinking the water, a lot of the dirt and grime comes off of you. And for you as well, it feels like this weird purifying thing <sighs> where a lot of your drunkenness leaves you, it almost sobers you up a little bit, but wow. it doesn't leave you feeling anxious or edgy again. It leaves you feeling a little bit clear, but solid, like you're anchored to something. Um, do you mind if I take a flask of this? She says, well, this is pretty potent stuff, but of course, I'll do it for you. Thank um, you. You see, she pours some into your I take out, I take out like a, a schmear, not one of those like tiny nips of schmear <laughs> I dump out the Schmirnoff ice and then... <laughs> Some of the water goes into it and she says, all right, doll, take care of yourself. It's a Thank long ferry you. ride back. Um, and she <laughs> flies back up to her stance, goes back into her stance, and the snow begins to collect on her wings again. Mm. Um, uh, wonderful. Uh, what's Kingston doing? Uh, I guess me and Pete are together on the bus. Going, or I guess, we, yeah, we, well, yeah, we're on the bus going back to my apartment building. Uh, cool, you get on the bus, you head back to Kingston's apartment. Um, uh, you walk up the steps. It's, what time is it? Uh, it's about like 11.30 night. Your folks are probably asleep yeah, and probably right. Claude and his family's asleep as well. Um, but you guys get up into Kingston's apartment. Kingston's apartment is like 
lovely. It has that like rich smell of like cool old antiques and good books and a lot of coffee grounds, all those kind of like musky deep smells that immediately you're like, oh, I'm in someone's nice home. I love the um, But I'm standing like this the whole time, like <laughs> awkward, you know? Like... Hey, you want a glass of water or something? Yeah, sure. It worked. Uh, yeah, guys, it's like, can I put on just a jazz record and go ahead and get him a glass of water? Uh, you see a for real old vinyl starts playing some great jazz. Uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead actually and, um, uh, Kingston, give me a medicine check. Uh, uh, 24. Uh, Kingston's mere presence, glass of water is like great New York tap water. Best tap water in USA, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, and the music playing, you feel yourself, I mean, you you know, Pete has whatever reservations he has, but physically you feel your body relaxing a little bit. Cool. Wild day, right? Yeah, that was crazy. I, uh, I think I'm like texting my guy who has like, I'm just letting him know that uh, I was kicked out of my old place, but there wasn't anything there. Um, you get a text immediately back saying, copy, uh, come to my place to re-up one time thing while you're figuring shit out. Okay. Uh, you can be staying in the master bedroom. Um, Why? I don't really sleep, I sleep in the guest bedroom now, so you'll be, you'll be in the master. Uh, all right, thanks. All good, man. And uh, I go, uh, can I just do classic host stuff and just get towels? <laughs> oh, this is making me feel get so awkward. I'm just like, thanks so much. A bunch of like travel size, like one soap, uh, one shampoo. Oh, that is so nice. Thanks so of much. Of course, man. Uh, yeah, whatever you need until you get on your feet. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks again. Just, uh, you know, be kind to my family. And if I catch you selling any drugs to my cousins or my parents, or my other cousins. Okay. We're gonna have a problem. Okay, We're gonna all have right, a big right. ass problem. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have a huge ass problem from it. which we cannot come back. <laughs> I mean, I just wanna say I don't create the desire in other people. What you should be worried about is the desire that is there already. Well, let me tell you something right now, dog. <laughs> all right, the desire is not there. If for some reason you enter the home and create the desire, <laughs> we gonna have a problem. <laughs> um, you see, as you guys have this little interaction that uh, uh, in a, there's like a cool old little piece of art on the wall that has some like mirror or reflective stuff in it. You see the kind of soft golden light and sort of rainbow light in a corner of it create a little bit of sparks. And you guys hear a loud noise as the painting rattles and falls off the wall. Oh, man, this is that same old bull that's the way <laughs> us two being two boxes here at the same time. Man, we yeah. need to figure this out. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't sell anyone in your house drugs. I'm not gonna, I really won't. Thank you. I won't. I take out a bunch of like little holders and vials <laughs> and stuff that I just have on my own. This is just my own. Pete, how are you standing up? It's, it's like a mixologist, you know? You, you're just constantly like <laughs> re-navigating where you're at. I tell you, you I did dope one time in 1978. It was <laughs> the craziest thing that ever happened. You know what? What? A, I'm going to bed. Good night, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> um, uh, Casey goes off to bed. You're just kind of kicking it, waiting to... I'm going to be awake for like five more hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you look around. Yeah, what's Pete doing awake in Casey's apartment? I'm trying not to go through anything. Like, I am trying to be like a good guest, so I'm just kind of like... Give me a perception check. Yeah, cool. Nat 20. Nat 20. <laughs> um, you see on top of the refrigerator, just a little light layer of dust on it. Uh, there's a big glass vase full of corks. There's some takeout menus. Um, there's, uh, uh, you also see that wrapped in like ancient stinking gauze is an obsidian ankh, this old Egyptian symbol of life. Uh, you immediately pick up some weird magical uh, sensations from it. You see that it's under a clear salad bowl. So it's like there's a salad bowl put on top of it. Uh, and you see that there's also a, what looks like um, a framed photograph that's fallen down onto the face of the photograph so that you can't see what the photo okay, is. Okay, I lift that up, I gotta look at it. 
Uh, you see there is a young Kingston Brown, his dreads not yet silvery white, but instead sort of salt and pepper. Um, I think we're clean shaven. Yeah. Um, and you see that there is a younger Hispanic woman in her 30s, beautiful, like classic high cheekbones. You see that there uh, are wedding rings on their fingers and that they are standing in front of City Hall. She's pretty cute. Uh, I, um, I feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Um, Misty, uh, you get back to your lovely penthouse. Uh, there's some, some notes, some sticky notes left from Alyssa. Mm -hmm. um, there's one big one on your kitchen table. Um, I assume you're going back to your penthouse, yeah. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, it's Monday. We're dark on Mondays. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see that there is an invitation that has been on your to-do list for a little while, you frankly forgotten about it, but there's a uh, little post-it saying last day to RSVP highlighted by Alyssa. In little birch bark and ivy leaves is an invitation to the wedding of Angela Confetti and Ronald Pigeon. <laughs> well, um, I don't super wanna go, but also the Confettis are one of those crime families that uh, also are great uh, supporters of the arts. <laughs> <laughs> like they're, yeah. they're like, oh, it's my uh, my cousin's birthday. We're gonna bring like five incredible Broadway stars and have them sing at the birthday. <laughs> so, uh, as um, I as patrons of the arts, I have to go to this wedding. There you go. Um, and so I RSVP yes in my most beautiful purple ink. Um, you, see, uh, you see that as you RSVP, the invitation <laughs> turns into this little twig blight and goes. Go on, go on. See, it runs and hits its head into your door, <laughs> backs up, runs, bam, head again. I <laughs> open the door. You're stupid. Go <laughs> through the door. <laughs> Thank you. And <laughs> takes off, uh, running down the hall. Um, uh, lovely. So. You guys all, and you know, variously go to sleep that night. Uh, the only person that I want to cover what happens when they're asleep is Pete. Uh, Pete, uh, you crash in the master bedroom, a big wide bed in Kingston's apartment, and you come to floating above the dreamlike city of New York. The skyscrapers and buildings are all a polished dark glass, like a window looking into an empty night sky, but the reflections of the starlight above them as the snow drifts up off the ground going into the sky surround you. Uh, you feel weightless here, as though you could swim around or move in any direction. Um, I think I, uh, I think I go to Priya's house. <laughs> um. You swim through the dreaming of New York and you arrive right near Union Square, sort of, you know, close to Stytown, uh, and you see a gorgeous, opulent apartment all done in this illuminated nighttime glass. And you see that there is a little bubble, something imperceptible, flashes of light and color, and you get the sensation that Priya is dreaming in that room. Cool. Um, I know I shouldn't do this, but I just go anyway. I try to like look in at the dream. You pop your head in and you see that there is a tea party on top of a clock in a strange dark forest. And you see that Priya is talking to a fractured man. Uh, as she's sitting at this little tea table. Uh, she looks gorgeous, by the way. Uh, you see that she looks up and says, well, the collection didn't meet my standards, at least for myself, and I think that oftentimes when we find ourselves trying to create a body of work or find a theme or a central thread through something, we end up 
elaborating on subconscious ideologies. Culture works on us in ways that we can't even quite estimate or imagine from our conscious mind. Uh, and you see that she's just talking to this fractured man, this babble of stuff about her art and what she's working on. Um, go ahead and make a stealth check for me, if you'd be so kind. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's see, that's uh, 13. She looks up <laughs> and looks at you and she says, Peter, what are you doing here? <laughs> that's it for this chapter of Dimension 20. But wait, what harkens on the wind? <laughs> Speak to me, bird. More full episodes? of Dropout.tv's own Dimension 20, available with a free trial that you could sign up for today? Hopefully our viewers are brave enough to answer the call. There he goes. Make a crumb trail all the way up to you my You see mouth. one pigeon looks over and says, it's a trick! And then they start walking away. Oh my can God, I, what I, is wrong with me? 